In today's video, I'm going to show you how to remove motion blur from your bird photography. So this is what the photo looks like to start with. You can see it's quite blurry and it doesn't look that good. And now after the changes, this is what it looks like. As you can see, it is a lot more sharp and a much better bird photo. If you like bird photography and bird watching, then be sure to subscribe. Let's jump into the tutorial. So you've taken a photo of a bird, but you can see that it's blurry like this. So this is a photo here that I took of a Nanking kestrel the other day. And you can see that it's quite blurry on the edges here. So I'm going to show you how to fix this in Photoshop. Now, obviously it is ideal that you take the photo not blurry with the camera. However, if like me, you got home and you realized, uh-oh, my photo is blurry, I'm going to show you a quick fix in Photoshop. Okay, so what we're going to do is open up the image in Photoshop. And you're going to want to have the layers open in Photoshop. And now what I'll do is Command J if I'm on a Mac, or Control J if I'm on a PC. And you can see that it duplicates the layer. You could also right click on this and do duplicate layer, go here and then select OK. That's the old fashioned way, but I like to use shortcuts. So we have our layer here. And if we want, we can rename this to sharpened. There are two ways of doing this. The first is to use the ruler tool. So here on the side, if you click and hold down on this little triangle here next to the eyedropper tool, you'll see the ruler tool. So we can select that. Then by zooming in, you can see I've already done it here. You can actually draw out where your blur is occurring on the image. So I can see here is where the blur is occurring. Now what you want to do is not just draw the distance like this, but you actually want to draw it in the direction of where the blur is going. So I can see it's going from here to here. And you want to try and get this as precise as possible. And now the two pieces of information that I want to jot down, you can just write this on a piece of paper, is the angle, which is A, which is 153 for me, and the L, which is, or the L1, which is the length, which is 11 for me. So I would write down this information. So option number one would be to use this information for the next step. Now, before we get to the second step, what we're going to do is right click on this new layer that we duplicated, and we're going to click on convert to smart object. So I'll click on that. Now we have a smart object. Now the next step here is to click on filter, to click on sharpen, and we will click on smart sharpen. Now I'll just drag these back down to zero like that. Now what you're going to do is use those numbers that you wrote down and we'll put them in here and then you will get something that looks slightly better. Now option two, which I prefer doing is to actually just ballpark it and guess off the vibes of the photo. That's what I think is easier. So just to show you how this works, I'll take the radius up to the most and amount up to the most just so you can see the extreme of this. So this here doesn't look very natural. So what we're going to do here is play with these two until we get it looking as sharp as possible. Now what you're going to have is a lot of noise here in the background and in the foreground. We will use the reduce noise after. We don't want to use that just yet. First we want to use these two until we get somewhere that we think is pretty good. So don't use the reduce noise just yet. So I'll play with the amount here until I'm seeing it's looking pretty decent. And here I can see the radius is too wide here. So I'll just drag it down slightly like that. That's looking a bit better. And what I can do here to see the difference is actually click on this preview here to turn it on and off. So I can see here the details in the wings. If I click on and off preview, it is looking a lot sharper, which is really useful to see. By the way, if you're not seeing these options here, you'll just click on this toggle down, but I won't actually be using them for this. So I might play with this just a bit more, but I am quite liking this right now. I think that looks pretty good. And then I might use the reduce noise just a bit like that. I think this now looks a bit more clear. So now because we duplicated this layer here, I can turn this layer on and off and I can see the difference. And as you can see, it is a lot sharper. So now if I zoom out, I can see it as well. Look at that. It is a lot more sharper, especially around the eye and the feathers here as well. I think that is a lot better. Now, another thing that you can do here is do Command J or Control J again, and I'll just call this Edit 2. Now what I'm going to do here is play with a few other features. Now this is a JPEG image. This is not a raw image. And beginner bird photographers will most likely be taking photos with JPEG. So what I'm going to do here is click on Image, click on Adjustments, and click on Levels. This is something that I really like to work with. So I want to bring out just a bit more brightness. So what I'll do here is zoom in, 
and play with these two adjustments here. So if I drag this up like this, you can see that the image gets brighter. And then this point here, I'm going to slightly drag down like that. So I can work with these two here to change the lighting. Now, obviously, if I go too much like this, it won't look very good. And if I drag this all the way up, that won't look very good either. So I'm just going to work with the levels here until I get something that I think looks pretty decent. I think I'm happy with this. And then I'll hit OK. Now, the reason that we've done smart layers here on the side and not just duplicated the layer is actually because then we can reopen up those settings. So if I click on the down arrow here, you can see this smart filter here. So if I want to readjust that, I can just double click now on levels. I can now see it open here again and I can still continue to adjust it, which is really useful and the benefit of using smart filters. So I'll click on OK. Now the last step that I like to do to fix any motion blur issues is to click on filter and then click on camera raw filter. Now here, what we're going to be able to do is work with a few different settings. So first we can work with the light here. So I can do that, add a bit of contrast. And one thing that can help correct motion blur is actually decreasing your highlights. So if I zoom in here and then drag down this highlights here, you can see that it actually looks a bit more sharp. Same thing with the shadows. If I drag this down slightly, I can see that it's actually looking a bit more sharp. Now, what I'm going to do here is scroll down and what we can do is use texture. Now, if you drag this all the way up, it will cause a lot of grain as you can see here, and it's a bit too much. But if you want, you can add just a bit, but there is a fine balance here to make sure it looks good. Then if you continue scrolling down here, you can see under detail, sharpening and noise reduction. So I'm just going to drag sharpening all the way up. As you can see here, this causes a lot of noise, which we don't want. But then we can tackle this by dragging up the noise reduction. Now this can cause it to look a bit cartoonish if we add too much noise reduction. So again, it's about finding a fine balance. So I might have noise reduction to about here, sharpening to about here. Now this is looking a lot better. So then I will click on OK. So now we have our edited photo. This is what it looks like now. And this is what it looked like to start with. And if I zoom in, this is what it used to look like. And this is what it looks like now. If you found this useful, be sure to subscribe. And if you want to see me go bird watching, then click on this video here, where I explore some local ponds and try to see 30 different species in only two hours. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.